Auroras have been described as one of nature's most magnificent shows. Fluorescent ribbons of green and pink dancing across the night sky. It is pretty spectacular. You can understand why ancient cultures saw them as bushfires in heaven or, or if they saw them as he, uh, a war going on in, in heaven. Essentially you're looking at the same process as a neon sign. The radiation from the sun is coming into our atmosphere and interacting with the and exciting the oxygen and nitrogen molecules in our atmosphere and so that's causing them to glow. And over the next two years, the light displays are expected to be more frequent and stronger as the sun's magnetic cycle ramps up. Yeah, it's coming up to what's called solar maximum. So this is when the sun's at its most active, its ma uh, magnetic field is at its strongest and most dynamic. So it's really a really good time to, uh, f to have auroras. The sun has an 11 year cycle where it goes from solar minimum where it's not very active, you don't see a lot of sunspots, to halfway through where it is, there's lots of sunspots. So the, uh, the sun's surface being churned up, pulled apart, which means you get more chances for solar flares, coronal mass ejections. In Australia, the southern lights are most commonly seen in Tasmania, but during strong events, they can be witnessed hundreds of kilometres further north. For a, just a normal aurora, uh, you, you know, you're really basically Antarctica. If you start to get a storm, that's when you get Tasmania and New Zealand, South Island and New Zealand into play. Medium storms, that's when you get Albany, Esperance, South Australia, Victoria come into play. And then when you get medium to large storms, that's when we get to see them here in Perth. NASA has projected solar maximum in July 2025. Originally they thought it was going to be slightly um, below average, but it's really starting to peak, so it might be a really good one.